Actor Russell Brand is weighing in on how globalist corporations benefit from the culture wars in a recent conversation with Fox News' Tucker Carlson. Let's watch. Trying to cultivate, and with the acceptance that, that you have just outlined, that it is beneficial for them to have people mired in cultural argument, which to the people involved directly are very significant, and I would not seek to undermine the importance of people that are directly involved in those struggles. Yes. The same way as I won't be dismissive about the civil rights struggles of the 60s. But if we, to the exclusion of all else, focus on that, centralized power likes it fine. If you see the most powerful organizations in the world willing to adopt the logos of those movements, it suggests to me <laughs> that they are not going to interrupt the trajectory of their intentions <laughs> significantly. <laughs> that is true. If Apple's on board, it's not really a revolution, is it? <laughs> I don't think Apple wants to radically alter <laughs> our society. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be taking a lot of Apple's money <laughs> so that uh, people elsewhere can live through it. Oh, no, 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 I don't want what? <laughs> right, Facebook, we're demonopolizing that. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Could we just focus a bit more on. Oh, <laughs> so he's essentially making the argument there that I think has been made on this show many times that, you know, you know when corporations would very easily adopt um, woke slogans, um, they're going to sponsor the Pride Parade, they're going to recognize Black History Month, they're going to stand in solidarity with trans people. Uh, because it's very easy to uh, to to uh, to talk the talk mm -hmm. on those issues without having to change anything fundamental about your business practices. Yeah, I love this segment. I love this take. This is the left critique of weaponization of identity politics that many of us, including myself, have been making since. 2016, 2017. And I really love that he started by saying this, is, of course, isn't a pogrom against any people having identities or the value of those identities. This isn't about saying the civil rights movement was bad or trying to minimize um, real struggles for equality in this country that you know the country as a whole has benefited from. This is about having some scrutiny about why it is that corporations who do not share the same interests with the, in the various marginalized individuals are adopting certain slogans flags, logos, et cetera. And is it an actually to advance the interests of those marginalized groups, which again, are not aligned with the interests of corporations who often are involved in exploitation and in extreme economic inequity, or is it to start to try to insulate themselves from criticism? So they can say, oh, we have a black CEO, or we have a, you know, a woman CEO, or we're diverse, or we sponsor the, the pride parade, or we're a friendly woke company. And that, that, is, that is insulating them from bigger criticisms and policies um, policy changes like imposing a wealth tax that could actually raise the kind of funds that could be used in the populations that they claim and to care about. Even even on the wokeness issues themselves, not um, not walking the walk when it it does put their business model at yes. risk. How many you know companies want to will make statements against you know whatever the religious freedom provision in whatever state, um, but. Are, are, but will willingly take out, if you're an entertainment production company, will take out a same-sex romance or, or a, a, a plot line that is even remotely critical to China. Yes. That's gone because of what uh, re religiously repressive or authoritarian communist governments like Chinese, if, that, if they want them, then, then the, the company, then it's woke, then its commitment to wokeness is over. Its commitment to wokeness it only matters so far as as it's it's domestic and oh well there's gonna be a couple angry yes conservatives it's it's, in the com US. it's not actually you know it's not a it's not commitment yeah. it's 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 a window dressing it's a shield against substantive criticisms that are really deserved now here's why I'm so glad that Russell Brand made that argument where he made that argument. As a leftist who is very skeptical and who is very critical of weaponized identity politics, it can be frustrating to hear conservatives characterize these companies as woke companies as though they are sincerely invested in X, Y, and Z. So there's a real, I think, dissonance between Tucker kind of enjoying what Russell Brand was saying there. I'm glad he did, right? But and other segments that Tucker and other Don Fox have done that you know agree with the pre premise of Ron DeSantis and others who say, well, Disney is a woke company. Well, we we should be against Disney. We should be against Apple. We should be against these companies because they are advancing these substantive issues. They are actually for trans people. They're actually for black people. I mean, I mean, it, mm -hmm. you know, they're actually for policies and 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 groups that we don't actually agree with substantively. That's not true. 
And it's weird to to for to, uh, for someone who actually is invested right. in the in the well being of those groups and those issues, to feel like I have to be standing in the shoes of Disney, an organization that I have no interest in defending, right. and because they're being characterized as Disney's genuine not a woke company advocates for those interests. It's not a woke company as far as the Uyghur Muslims are concerned, right? Oh, <laughs> is, right. Isn't it wokeness to support the human rights everywhere? Yes, and and look, I mean, there are a lot of issues that none of these companies are very good on. Israel, Palestine, chief among them, right? So again, like, I, I hope that we can get to a place where, unfortunately, the left perspective on all of this is very rarely seen in mainstream media. The liberal channels are very heavily invested in this view of weaponized identity politics, superficial identity politics, because rich people are always invested in it. The same way that it helps companies, corporations, um, shield themselves from substantive criticism. It allows wealthy mi minorities to shield themselves from sub substantive criticism, and the Democratic Party and its elites to shield themselves from criticism and to distinguish themselves from the Republican Party. So in one, you have two corporate parties. The Democrats don't actually have to do a thing for any marginalized groups as long as they superficially say, we kneel in a kente cloth mask like Nancy Pelosi performatively. They don't have to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing. They can raise police budgets like Biden has done. They can not cancel student debt. They can get rid of, let the, let the child tax credit expire. And none of that matters because they're still better than Republicans because they do this performative identity politics. And on the other side, there's a weaponization of these culture wars and identity politics by conservatives who say, vote for me because I'm against all these things that you don't like. But at the end of the day, are they doing anything substantively for their populations? Are they actually passing the $15 minimum wage that Floridians voted for? Are they pursuing those kind of economic pol uh, populist policies? Are they complaining about spending in Ukraine without actually advocating for spending at home? And at the end of the day, is there ever going to be a politician who can see through all of that mess and just advocate for the popular policies that working people for activists, some activist groups as well, uh, who, who get uh, overly caught up in what everybody using the correct language, getting obsessed yeah. with policing language, including in, internal to the to the yes. to the movement and everybody else, which annoys everyone and just becomes totally counterproductive. Um, uh, I mean, and then and then I mean, some of these things being grifts. Of course, we've talked about the Black Lives Matter movement and what yeah. the, the founders. The, the national movement, right. not, and, not, not local people the, and participants. The organization yes. and how it used the funds that yes. it accrued to build a hype house. A, a hundred percent. And by the way, you know, it's worth noting that, you know, socialists, people who are real leftists and uh, engaged in movement organizing and talking to real people, working class people, organizing working people, know this. India Walton, who ran, who ran and won her Democratic primary for mayor of Buffalo, New York, um, I interviewed her on the show and was asking her about these kinds of issues. She's, you know, a, a black woman who is very progressive, obviously, but she says, look, no, we don't bring up, you don't shoehorn all of this stuff in at the door. You ask people what they care about. You ask people about, about their issues. You're not trying to correct people's language as you're trying to establish a relationship of trust as you're door knocking and trying to build a movement. Now, what happened to India Walton? Well, despite winning her Democratic primary, the Democratic incumbent, a corporate a Democratic political candidate who was also black was able to say, I'm the guy for you. Mm -hmm. Identity politics was definitely a factor in that in that race. And when anyway on a writing, cam writing campaign largely supported by Democrats in the state who said that they would support the winner of the primary, but they ultimately didn't. So you got to keep your eyes on the prize, picking a candidate based on race, picking a candidate based on these other factors. While it can be a factor, it might you know, militate in favor of them having more empathy one way or the other is in no way dispositive. And we've seen identity politics weaponized too often to undermine the interest of working people. Mm, indeed. All right. Well, we will have more rising right after this. Please stay tuned.